Welcome to a walk in the park with your host, Matt Jacob Aaron. And I'm in the, at, at home in the dark. <laughs> Hashtag stay in the, in the snow, actually. Is it snowing? What? Yeah, we got we got about three inches of snow today. Some of the more southern parts of Kentucky got up to like nine inches of snow. So that the hardest hit was western Kentucky so far, which is also the place where all them tornadoes hit. So they're having a bit of a time, but it's real pretty out. So it's a good time to not be in Kentucky right now. Man, I, you know, looking at at the background behind you, I gotta say. That's pretty rad. You've made some, some choice moves. I like a good winter, though. I like a good winter. Yeah. You know, we we uh, we didn't go up to uh, to New Hampshire for Christmas as we normally do, so I missed out on the like foot of snow that is normally up there. So this was a nice a nice unexpected treat. It's going to be about nine degrees tomorrow, so I'm not thrilled about that. And then it's going to heat up, be in the 40s and rainy, and that's just not fun at all. So welcome back to weather. Yeah. yeah. But it looks pretty, pretty nice where you are. It's very pretty. You, you, well, I'm sure it looks pretty there too. You have a, probably a, a white Christmas. Well, it's a little late. <laughs> Look, I haven't taken white. my tree down or the Christmas lights in front of the house. So. Right. Still Christmas to okay. me, man. Still Christmas Good. to me. Good. Yeah. Today we talk about Spider-Man. The Spider-Man. The Spider-Man No Way Home. One and two and three. One, two. Spider-Man. They numbered them. Yes, they did number spoiler, them. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Okay. If you haven't seen No Way Home, stop right now. Also avoid the internet because the internet has officially gotten very spoilery. It's, you know, don't go to Variety. Variety has got a really nice interview with someone and... We'll just stop right here. From now on, we're talking spoilers in three, two, one. Spoilers, go. Variety has a nice Andrew Garfield interview where he talks about the like two weeks that they were on set. And then he also talks about doing like Tick, Tick, Boom and some of the other stuff that he did this year. But, whoo! I mean, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were trending on Twitter for months ahead of this movie so it made sense it was the most rumory of all rumor mill it was incredibly heavily rumored as was the other big reveal in the movie or at least the other big cameo in the movie which was matt murdoch the netflix daredevil showing up and catching a brick with his hands that was so cool so cool. How did you do that? I'm a really good lawyer. Put that on a sticker and sell it to people. It will go. Yes, absolutely. Tell me your first thoughts on this movie. Well, yes. I told you. <laughs> I told you. Watch this movie first. You're like... Should I watch the Matrix? Should I watch this? Should I watch? The, well, one of them went directly Spider-Man. into my house, and yeah, the other yeah, one yeah. was a gigantic pain yeah. in the ass. Right, right. Yeah, I was blown away by this film. I mean, th- that this actually happened. I, and I thought the cameos were going to be short, and mm-hmm. they were not. They were, they were not, not short at all. No, nope. uh, full integral pieces of this film. So and they were uh, very important. Yeah, to the I couldn't plot. believe. I couldn't believe it actually happened. All the things actually happened. Yeah. Okay, so I have to set the scene for you, okay? I have to set the scene for you. We go to the Monday at 12.50 showing at Baxter. So, you know, almost 1 p.m. We walk in, and there are easily eight to nine people in the popcorn line, which for Baxter at that time on a Monday is insane. And winter break was over. Like kids should have been in school and I spot at least three kids. And I'm like, what, what is happening? Like, is this movie theater about to be packed? If so, I don't feel great about that. Not super thrilled about it for a 
myriad of reasons. So we go in, there's not that many people in there. We, we sit kind of like back, the back third in the middle mm -hmm. and pretty immediately I realize there's a little kid behind me and to the left. And then almost immediately after that, like a grandma walks in with a, like a seven-year-old, like a six-year-old, seven-year-old and a straight up three-year-old, like, oh, like a tiny, tiny child. And then more people keep coming, more people keep coming. Mm. And, and some of them are kids as well. So I'm just kind of like, eh, hopefully everybody's cool. You know what I mean? And during the previews, there's all of this like chatter. There's just like, people talking through the previews, not like full voiced, but enough to where I'm just like, all right, well, you know, hopefully when the movie starts, it'll calm down. You know, this is just during the previews. Maybe they don't care about the Batman preview that much. And the movie starts and this fucking toddler is talking the entire time. Generally, generally, I adore children. Children are cute. That age range, that specific child, that specific kid was adorable. And half the stuff that he said when it wasn't just utter nonsense was adorable stuff. It was like watching a horror film and somebody's like, don't go through that door. You know, it was like, watch out, Spider-Man. Like, it was really cute. But months of buildup for me, the 39-year-old man about mm -hmm. to watch a comic book movie, which is the culmination of a trilogy, a duology, a new trilogy, and plus cameos in, in three other movies, was like, I was not in a place mentally to be able to handle a two and a half year old being like, why is he mad at Spider-Man? And it just <laughs> kept taking me out of the movie. So like, I had a, just a weird range of emotions during this. Did you get up and leave? No, I didn't get up and leave. I wanted to watch the movie. I wanted to see what happened. And the kid was like generally quiet. Like he didn't stop talking, but like it wasn't so loud. Like when stuff was happening, it's not like it was like, you know, where I was like, hey, kid, I need, I missed that line of dialogue. I could hear what was going on in the screen. I just also heard little man over here and what his thoughts were. So, when? <laughs> and like the grandma, like every like, 10 minutes would either respond to him and answer his questions or whatever, or oh would God. give him the, Shh, Hey, come on. But that was like hella few and even hella far between in a way. He kind of ruined this, this experience for me and just made me long for the matrix. It made me want to just like, Man, like, I tell you, watching The Matrix is just being like, hey, you know what? It's time. You ready to hit play? Let's hit play. Hit play on that brand new movie that comes directly to my, you know, very sensible 55-inch screen television. And, and let's watch this movie at our leisure. And then, oh, you have to pee? Great. Pause. Restroom. Come back. Oh, you want a cup of tea? Let me set the teapot. What do you think of the movie so far? So, yeah, it just made me like it, it, all of the things about going to the theater that I hate all kind of came in at the exact same time. So like, I just, I, I feel like that annoyance level, like applied to the movie. I was like, I'm annoyed at Dr. Strange because you're supposed to be the adult in the room. And now you're like the manager who was like, get this to me in an unreasonable amount of time. And then is mad at you because the work is crap. Like, come on, bro. You can't do that. And then, yeah. And then I'm annoyed at, at Green Goblin just for peace. You know what I mean? And, you know, which is true to form, you know, that's what he's supposed to be. I mean, I, 
I, I always thought it was over the top, like as Green Goblin, but I mean, you are Green Goblin, so you, I guess your acting is supposed to be over the top. Definitely. Uh, it was, it, it really worked for me this time for some reason, like way better than even in, in the, the original films. And uh, yeah, Doc Ogg, I was sold on, I was sold on everything. Oh. Like, everything worked for me fine. Yeah. Like I was, I was... Uh, which, which it shouldn't have. I and mean, you're right. Doctor Strange was very out of character, like super out of character. Like, mm hmm. It was a little bit strange, if you will, that he Dr. just strange. wanted that he he was willing to just cast cast the spell for him. Yeah. At the same time, you know, we, we discussed this before. At the same time, he was formerly the sorcerer supreme. Yeah. And so he has lots of power. So I guess making everyone forget that he's Spider Man, not so hard for him to do. But yeah, he knows that there are consequences as well. So right. in a way, he should have seen this coming. You're right. He is the adult in the room, you know? Right. Also him just telling them to go do it and not helping. A little weird. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, go ahead and get all these guys rounded up. I'm just going to go back to chilling. I mean, he did fight them and then get locked up in uh, alternate yeah. universe land for a little while. True. So, I mean, that that made sense. Uh, right. Except that alternate reality was terrifying. Right. Uh, uh, parallel that, universe, that, whatever that mirror dimension, you know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to spend that much time in there as much as he did. And when he came out, he seemed to be in a much better mood than I would be if I were in the mirror dimension. Right. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd be furious. I'd it'd be just a little more furious than your movie going experience. You know? Just like talking about it now, like I think this is the first <laughs> time I've really vocalized uh, how annoyed I was. So that put me in a in a in a negative headspace to be able to effectively deal with this character loss because wow, I was not prepared. I was not prepared mentally. Pour one out for Aunt May. Cause I couldn't believe yeah, I couldn't believe they did it. And at the same time I thought, well, maybe they'll bring her back somehow. But right. Then at the point of the film, I feel like, was Hey, we're Sony and we can make a better Marvel movie than you can. <laughs> One of the things that they, they were like, you know, we've had enough origin story for Spider-Man. We don't need to see his origin story. We don't need to see his origin story. So they were like, all right, well, we're just going to pick it up where he's already Spider-Man and move it from there. And then they go for the length of five movies, Civil War, Homecoming, Avengers, Avengers, Far From Home. They get into movie six and they're like, just kidding, it was all an origin story. Yep, all an origin story. And now yep. they can have their own Sony pocket universe with Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Right. With the Sinister, Sinister Sticks, you got to Venom, up, what's his face? Yep. I'm sure they can use Vulture. They right. made an agreement to use all these guys. So right. they worked it out perfectly and they did Marvel better than Marvel. And that's what's, that's what I, I was screaming, wanting to say so bad la last week. I, I don't know what I said. Hopefully I didn't spoil it. I mean, but it's still that. Marvel. It's still Kevin Feige. Like it's all, he's still pulling the strings. Yeah. But is, is he? Yeah. Why is this film? Uh, yeah. Because it, it, I mean, like all of it is Kevin, Kevin Feige's had his hand in all of these. John Watts, right? you know, directed all three of these Homecoming, Far From Home, No Way Home. But what I'm saying is this movie couldn't happen if all the other Spider-Man movies never happened. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Of course. And they I mean, not... You can't bring... Yeah, you can't bring Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in if that doesn't happen. And honestly, none of this happens. None of this happens if Into the Spider-Verse doesn't happen. Because Into the Spider Verse was felt like a test balloon for can people understand a the concept of multiple Peter Parkers, multiple spider like spider instances. You don't think and, they had to be working on this film before Into the Spider Verse? On this uh, film, it's been a few years. Yeah, no, Into the Spider Verse came out. Let's Google it. Two guys. Two guys. If you like two guys googling stuff and you just want to hear it all the time go donate on i made a buy me a coffee on this nice. int pods buy me a uh, a coffee i'll put a link in the description love that and we can send you a copy of the mp3 i'll just send it to you manually 
because that's how big our audience is. Sweet. Into the Spider-Verse came out in 2018. So you figure with all the animation and stuff, that was probably what, like 20, I mean, 2016, they had to be starting on that. Yeah. It sounds like they were still in the writing the movie phase when they reached out to McGuire and Garfield, because obviously you can't do this movie if they're not a part of it. I mean, I guess you could, if like McGuire was like, no, then you can pull in like Kirsten Dunst or somebody, you know, maybe you can pull in, what's his name? The, the, the goblin son, you know, mm. so, you know, but according to this variety interview with Andrew Garfield, basically Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige called and were like, Hey. Are you even interested? And then where, what do you think your character would be up to? Like, where do you think he would be, you know, given the time distance? That is awesome. That and is I assume awesome. a similar conversation happened with McGuire. Now with McGuire, like one of the things that I've uh, read We've is got that, Aunt May on the screen. We never talked about her, do we? Yeah. That. I mean, I was not emotionally ready for her to be the sacrificial Uncle Ben. Like... You got Oscar winner Marissa Tomei, and 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 you kill her off. Kill her off. She barely had anything to do in either of these two movies. You know, like a montage of teaching him how to dance and get ready for the homecoming dance in that first movie, and then a little will they or won't they between her and Happy in the second movie, and then that's it. I get that she's not like super integral, but like I feel like Sally Field in the Amazing Spider-Man movies had like some real work to do. And then, here's the thing. On the whole, this movie made me sad. This movie made me sad. And I don't I don't need to go to a Spider-Man movie for depression. You know what I mean? Spider-Man's supposed to be fun. Now, at the same time, Amazing Spider-Man 2 made me sad because of the whole Gwen Stacy situation. So it's not like I'm going to see Batman. You know? Right. Right. I gotta yeah. See. Yeah. And, and, you know, the more I think about it, I don't know that it was necessary at all. It was just a way for them to link in with great power comes great responsibility. It's yeah. Really way to get that in. Sort of it, it, was a, it was a really touching moment between the three Spider-Men when he's like ready to just completely rage out. And it's just like, y'all don't understand. And they're like, no, actually we do, bro. Well, actually. So, I mean, it, it, it served a purpose, but man, man, come on. And then at the end, nobody knows who he is. You know, he doesn't have Ned. He doesn't have MJ. It made me, at the end, I'm walking down to the theater. I've had this, like, weird experience with this child talking through the movie and various other children, you know, whatever. And, and the movie put me in a funk. And I'm like, you know, The Matrix ended on a happy note. They were like, we're going to remake this thing for real this time. And we're gonna sunshine and rainbows this this matrix, and we're gonna we're gonna remake it and make it fun for everybody. And Spider Man was like, "We're gonna kill your aunt and isolate you, so where you have no friends, but you get to do your Spider Man thing whenever you want." Yeah, you get to be Spider Man now. Yeah, yeah. But you get yeah. you have to be sad about it. Yeah. You gotta be sad about it. You get to make your own costume now. Right? You don't have any of that cool Stark tech anymore. I mean, it, it's like you said, the last five movies he's been in has been an or origin story for yeah. Spider-Man, except that there's no Aunt May now. You know, so that's depressing because now he has no one to bounce ideas off of. Right. Aunt May was like supposed to be his like grounding factor. Yeah. So how do you make Spider-Man without Aunt May? At the end of the day, though, Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man, you know, so where they're going from here, it looks like it's separate from Disney, but sort of, sort of just saying, okay, we're just in a different pocket dimension or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, that's what it felt like. I think at some point he, he'll end up back with the Avengers, but you know, like if they wanted to start a new Spider-Man trilogy, which that's the thing, that's the nice part about Sony being, you know, kind of having a hand on the wheel is that they're not worried about 30 movies and five TV shows. They're really only worried about, all right, we got to get the next Spider-Man movie out. Like we'll get a Venom, 
throw Morbius at the wall. But it looks so terrifying. Like Morbius looks absolutely terrifying. And Venom is pretty terrifying. The first one was. And how can they combine this so that it's for kids? That's what I don't understand. Like, what? if they're going to put Spider-Man and Morbius and Venom and, like, oh, also, Vulture. we've got Vulture in. I mean, maybe Morbius that's what movie. it is. Maybe it is a darker Spider-Man universe. Maybe that's what the, what they had to do. Sure. You know, sure. it's just, it's the DC of Spider-Man universes. Yeah. That's what it is. Everybody else went dark. Let's just go dark. Why make anything happy? Right. You know, I don't know. Why not? Why not? Why not? Do you, don't you want to be more depressed? Of course. Don't you want to be more scared? Lean yeah. in. Yeah, just just lean in. Just have all of your cortisol running all the time. Yeah, yeah a little fight or flight. Just burn it out. Yeah. Just, you'll have no adrenal fatigue whatsoever. Life is great. Just always, always be burned out. That's why the 40-hour work week is a sham. Yeah, 40 out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's based off this agrarian notion that no longer is pertinent. And what we found out in the last two years is that if you take free school out of the equation, everybody loses their minds and it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Either way, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about current Spider-Man. Here to talk about Spider-Man. And here... You throw that, throw that picture up there. Yeah, there they are. There they are in their glory. Hey, what rank? Because, like you said, they numbered the Spider-Man. Rank them best to worst. One, two, and three. One being the best Spider-Man, three being the worst Spider-Man. Well, there was a minute where I, I liked the Tom Holland Spider-Man the most. But I'm okay. I'm starting to lean into Andrew Garfield a little more. Like yeah. just just the way his portrayal and in this film he really got me good. I was like, yeah. I'm about to cry right now. Like, you, you know, <laughs> just what's happening? Why is Andrew Andrew Garfield hitting me in the feels? Yeah, no, I was I was completely sold. And I'm so glad he got to have that moment because he got the the wrong end of the stick on his Spider Man Spider Man oh, deal. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Because the timing really kind of would have worked out. For them to just move him into the Marvel Universe. Like, they could have plugged him into Ultron. Like, those movies were all happening at the same time. It would have changed his whole Spider-Man trajectory. Tom Holland's is great. And Tom Holland is a really good actor. Like, the emotion in that scene where Aunt May dies. The emotion in the last scene of Far From Home in that final fight with, with Quentin Beck, Mysterio, like dude, dude's got chops. Like that man can emote for, you know, this fun, happy neighborhood Spider-Man. He can really like portray that emotion, but Andrew Garfield, I think he's, I think he's number one. I think Tom Holland's two. And I think Tobey Maguire's three. Uh, I think it's got the same order. I think it's the same order. It's almost one, one A and then a chasm. Yeah. Yeah. And then Toby Maguire. But I think, because I I think, yeah, because the films, right? Yeah. Well, also because I've heard just like I've read and seen some stuff where like maybe he's kind of a dick or had Uh, tendencies for a while there. Andrew Garfield? No, no, no. Toby Maguire. Oh, Um, okay. So maybe that's kind of bleeding in. Spider Man 2. The one with Doc Ock is, you know, the big winner of those three movies. And I haven't seen that one in a really long time. So I feel like I need to rewatch it. But yeah, sure. If I was just going to like a classic and like set up like what Spider-Man could be, you know, the visuals were amazing of those first three. Yeah, I I didn't mind him as Spider-Man. I just, you know, parts of it didn't feel like Spider-Man, you know? Yeah. Like if I was going to pop in a Spider-Man movie, just like. A non of Avengers, non Civil War Spider Man. If I was either going to put in Spider Man 1, 2, 3, Amazing Spider Man 1 or 2, or what are the home movies, barring this third one, I would probably put on Amazing Spider Man 1. That would probably be, if I was just like, let me watch a Spider Man movie, that would probably be the one. Yep. You know, what's funny is that they said that Electro was one of the main reasons that uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was not good. And then they decided to bring Electro back. Right. But they did, of course, revamp the character, you know, in right. real time. So we sort of saw him just be cool like Jamie Foxx, 
you know, right. Instead of, uh, nerdy, which I, you know, I, I guess that works. It kind of worked. I just, I gave it a pass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like we're playing with the multiverse. So, you know, I don't mind so much if there's like, it's like the Fisk argument, you yeah. know, like, uh, keep thinking now, throw a door. Okay. You can rip a door off of a car. Sounds great. But I did okay. like the idea of Electro getting his hands on an arc reactor. Like, what would that be like for him? Obviously yeah, very he, cool. Yeah. Here's the problem I actually had with the film. Is that Doctor Strange was right the entire time. Oh, 100%. 100%. Should Could have saved Aunt May. Shut it like, down. No one listens. Shut no it one down. listens. Hit the button. You... Like absolutely a hundred percent right, hundred percent right. Just, just, just listen to your your adult. You know your adults. Listen to your right? your wise. You know they have wisdom. They're older than you. That's why you should have respect for your elders. That's right. No one's listening. Nope. Ah, it just makes me so angry. And then we still revere the character. Like there's some like Spider Man's great. No, he messed up really bad. Yeah. He's he he really. Horribly, he yeah. lost his his mother figure because he's trying to help them. You cannot right. help people that don't want to be helped like that. Yeah. That also, was a hard. That's a hard life lesson. Don't and mess it, with the spell I'm, I'm in dealing the first with place. It right now. Yeah. Don't mess with the spell in the first place. All you got to do is be like, "Hey, guess what? I'm Spider Man." You got to tell four people again that you're Spider Man. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Maybe that's five if you count Strange. That's it. But instead you mess with the spell and, you know, rip it, rip the hole in space time, whatever. Yeah. So whatever happens next in the following Doctor Strange and is because of Spider-Man, right? Man. Is that what they're, or, or it's going to be something else worse? I think it's, I think it's going to be the culmination of Spider-Man, Wanda, Loki, and whatever Strange ends up getting into, and okay. Evil Strange coming into the equation. Also, man, them using the last end credit scene as a trailer for the Doctor Strange movie rubbed me the wrong way. Because they haven't done that since the Avengers. Like, the end credit scene for Captain America 1 was the Avengers trailer. And that was worth it. But like, they filmed a, an end credit scene, or at least they it was in the works that it was going to be a, a check-in on where Toby was and where, and it was going to be yeah. that as the end credit scene. And instead they went to this trailer for, come on, man, we were going to watch the trailer anyway. Oh no, that's so sad. But to your Marvel Sony thing, like Sony literally put a trailer for a Marvel movie in, in the Sony film, in the Sony film. So like that synergy is there. Like they're, they're making each other money big time ways. So I don't see that changing anytime soon. No, I hear you. I hear you. You know, I was th kind of half expecting something else to show up after that, you know, like what, right. what about the thing we just watched or other, yeah, like you said, Spider-Man characters or whatnot. And what right. the first, the first in credit scene was what? It was Venom. It was, Venom. it yeah, was, yeah. It, yeah. So basically the end credit scene from Venom and the end credit scene from Spider-Man, like those two things happen. Like the entirety of Venom being in that universe was from the time the spell was cast until the spell was fixed. Does that make sense? Right. Oh, like Venom got brought right. into that universe. For a second. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For like, for, just, yeah. for just a second. For, for the four days of the movie or whatever. Right. Right. And then yeah. now a drop of his goo is there and supposedly yeah. someone else can become that. Right. So now are we going to have not Eddie. different? Yeah. We're going to have different not Venom. Eddie Brock, not like yeah. Marvel Venom. Who's maybe less of an anti-hero and more of a full-blown villain villain. What? I saw something comic book related that does Flash Thompson become Venom at some point? Is that a thing? I don't know. That's a Googling. Two guys Googling. Yeah, we're going to have to Google that. 
like this is not a perfect movie, but just having Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, like it worked. Like, yeah, it, the nostalgia worked for me. The Man. nostalgia totally worked. Yeah, it, it having MJ fall the exact same way that Gwen Stacy fell, and like shooting that in a similar fashion, and then having Andrew Garfield save MJ. That was a nice moment to kind of. I almost cried on that. It, oh, I literally almost cried. That was the most moving part of the movie for me. One hundred percent. Yeah. He gets to redeem himself. He redeemed himself in so many ways. It's, so many yeah. ways. It's, also, it's, uh, it's a shame. You, Toby calling well, him amazing over and over again. Right. No, you're amazing. You're amazing. That was the amazing that was Spider-Man. Spider-Man. That was good. Of course. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think I was the I only was one who laughed. Right, right. Right. Was, was right. Exactly. Yeah. At a movie on a school day. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to say, like, I was happy because... We saw all the spider man Oh, and no. What I was going to ask you is, do you think that there's a possibility we'll see Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire and or in another Spider-Man film? I, Tobey Maguire, I don't think so. I think at this point, he leads a pretty, like, not reclusive, but he's definitely like an out of the spotlight kind of a dude. Like, I think his last movie was like, what, 2016, 2017, something like that. Like... He didn't have to worry about money. He didn't need to do this. Evidently, the joke about him, like, in his back is real because I guess he hurt his back on one of the Spider-Man movies and that kind of prevented him from doing more of them. So if we do, I think it'll be maybe like old man Spider-Man kind of like, like if they did a live action Miles Morales movie, then I could see him maybe popping in and being like a mentor figure kind of thing. But if I had to put odds on it, I would say they're both really slim. But Garfield would be slightly higher. Yep. Yeah. I, th- I think it might be something people are asking for. Is there a reason that Sony can't do the Amazing Spider-Man 3? Oh, yeah. No, they could 100%. So now we know that Venom doesn't exist in the Marvel Universe Prime, right? So you could have him go back and it turns out he could end like him and Andrew Garfield could be in the same universe. You know, he could be his spider That's what I'm saying. Andrew Garfield is Amazing Spider-Man. Can they right. make Amazing Spider-Man 3? 100%. They could do that tomorrow. And they wouldn't need yeah. any approval, unless it's like written into a contract somewhere that, you know, but right. I doubt it. It's probably not a thing that they were thinking of. Yeah. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. That would be amazing. It would be amazing. And on that note, and- I think we got to wrap it up. So you got to start your day and I got to go to bed. Right. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. And if we forgot something, I'll leave a comment somewhere. And uh, on that note, bye. Bye. Was that a podcast?